I wasn't really recruited by any Division Ones. Ended up going to a junior college. You know, I wanted to be drafted. I wanted to play professional baseball. And so I ended up transferring to the University of Missouri for my junior year. And I was drafted out of there in the 17th round. And I played a full year in AAA. And the next spring training, I had an opportunity to make the team. It was uh, 2006. And I made the, made the big league team out of, out of spring training. You know, kind of being the fire starter. Things, you know, at the top of a lineup, you have the first at bat, you kind of set the tone for the game. I mean, you could strike out, you could pop out, you could ground out, but it's really the tone of it. And I think that's uh, that's important message to send to your team. My swing, my swing, it's, uh, it's different. You know, a lot of people say that they watch me, you know, your peers, you like to watch your peers and try to figure out what they do well. You know, for me, uh, you know, I'm on top of the plate. I like to get my foot down early, and I'm 100% a pull hitter. I knew nothing about wood bats. I knew nothing about the models, the weights, you know, how I'm supposed to use this thing. I never really used it in high school too much. You know, I'd practice with it every once in a while, but not like people, you know, now do. So I went to our clubhouse guy, and I just said, give me the one closest to aluminum bat. So he gave me an R161 and a C243 and went to the C2, the C243, and since then I've used the same thing. And now I have my own model, WSIK58. The process leading up to, to an at-bat is, can be different, slightly, depending on how you feel at the plate or who's on the mound, you know, how much experience you have against the pitcher. But mostly for me, when I'm in the hole, it's a time for me to think about my last at-bat a time for me to think about how this guy is pitching the game. You know, what pitches for him are working? What is he going to with two strikes? What is he going to first pitch? A lot of guys get into rhythm of throwing an off-speed pitch, first pitch to get ahead 0-1. Well, if I see that throughout the game, I want to be thinking about that while I'm in the hole. And then when you get on deck, for me, it's a lot of the same, but more I'm working with my timing. You know, I'm trying to time the pitcher as best I can and I'm trying to, to really slow down my swing and make sure that mechanically I'm doing everything right before I go to the plate. And as I'm walking to the plate, it's more of what he's gonna throw me, what he possibly can throw me. And when I start thinking about, all right, this guy could throw me a changeup first pitch, maybe it's a left-hander that likes his changeup that day, it really balances me and it, and it keeps me balanced where I'm not just going up there thinking he's gonna throw a first pitch fastball. You know, depending on how the game's going is, is how you approach every at bat. And really when, when it's time, you know, you, I clean the box, I dig my foothole, I step out, I take my last couple swings, and then it's, you know, it's dominate. It's dominate, get ready for an at bat, and it's your time. You know, it's your time to perform, and it's you against the pitcher, and be ready to go. You don't know when a game's gonna be won in baseball. That's the great thing about it. It could be the first inning, the first pitch. You have to be ready, you have to be prepared for, for every moment. So, you know, through, the, through experience of playing the game, through coaches, through people that have taught me my whole life, you know, that's something that I've, that I've really been able to, you know, lock down is, is living in the moment. You know, I've, I've just always kind of been that way. I don't know why, because like I said, it's a game of failure and you need to move on from those things. You need to be ready for the next, the next moment, whatever that is, because if I, if I take a bad swing on the first pitch or if I chase a ball out of the zone, how do I get back into, you know, the mental state of, of being ready for the next pitch? And that's, that's something that you constantly work on as an athlete and, you know, it's something, it's something that I pride myself on. Well, when I'm in a slump, it's... It's been so different through my career. You know, early in my career, it was swing more, swing more, swing more, try to pound it out. And as you, as you gain experience and you get older, you understand your swing better. You understand yourself better. You understand what you've done in the past to get out of things like that. And so you're able to minimize it and you're able to keep it, you know, maybe the two or three days where you're struggling a little bit, one series of games. And I just really try to keep it as simple as possible. You know, when I'm, when I'm struggling, sometimes I'll go up there and just say, just put the barrel on the ball. Whatever you have to do to just put the barrel on the ball, good things will happen. You know, when you're locked in, you can tell yourself four things and you can complete all of them. You can, you know, you can stick with that task because you feel good and you, you know, you're seeing the ball good and everything's slow so you, you're able to make adjustments really quick in between pitches. When you're struggling, sometimes the bat feels foreign in your hands, you know, so it's, it's really just about slowing everything down, being as simple as possible and having at least two, you know, two things that you tell yourself 
every at bat, every pitch. There's always the two things that you go back to. When you're struggling, those two things is, are just what you lean on. Whether it's a broken bat hit, or it's a double in the gap, or it's an infield like squibber down the line, you have to give yourself credit. You have to pat yourself on the back and start to build your confidence and, and you know, show that, that there's other ways to get hits besides hitting the ball at the ballpark or you know, crushing one right back at the pitcher, whatever it may be. As you get older, slumps aren't really part of your vocabulary anymore. You know, it's, it's more of just a battle. You go out there and, and you do whatever you can to help the team win. And maybe it's draw a walk and maybe it's make a good play defensively. And then all of that momentum starts to work towards your at-bats. And then all of a sudden you're playing the way you want to play again. So when my career is over, I don't know if I really have a say in how I want people to remember me. But if I did, you know, I would just, I would want people to remember the way I play the game. Not necessarily the statistics or the money or, you know, any, anything other than, than he was a good teammate and he played hard every day. He was ready for every game. You learn through experience and, and you learn how to play the game the right way. You learn how to, how to prepare yourself for different situations. And really it all just comes down to failure. How do you respond to failure? You know, how do you respond to popping up? How do you respond to um, striking out? Do you slam your helmet? Do you break your bat? And I've, you know, I've done that. I think a lot, everybody has. And it, you know, it all comes down to, to was he a good teammate? And was he prepared to play? And did he play hard every day? And that's, you know, that's really how I want to be remembered. There's so many different walks of life that you can be a warrior in. Really, it all just, it all boils down to mentality. You know, it all boils down to mentality. What, you know, what are, what are you gonna do to, to put yourself in position to be better than your opponent or better than whatever you're facing? And that's, that's what a warrior is. That's what a warrior is about, is, is you know, constantly staying on top of you know, their mental, their mental approach or their mental thoughts. And, you know, if you can control those, you can control yourself, you can control your opponent. And that, to me, that's what a warrior is.